Holy, that's the first I've ever seen that. He gives me looks that I've never in my life have a dog give me without trying to bite. I don't know, maybe it comes with a little bit of forgiveness. Big mistake. I get the nice boy on a nice New Jersey step. I <laughs> got the I know that we talked on the phone and everything, but just rem just go over the deal. We had well, we got him at four months. Right now we had another dog. We had um, two other dogs. Two other. Emma well, right. Passed away, and my son's dog, which is a uh, German Shepherd Apollo. Yeah. Everybody was fine. Right. You know, they got a lot. I mean, the dog still barked when people came in and stuff. Yeah. But, but as far like as this. not going crazy, Emma passed away. So we got this other puppy, and my son moved out. So we thought he was lonely. We thought. Right, so we get him another dog, and the first day they were fine, and then the next day it was so just, you know, going I crazy on them. I not even tell you what even happened. They it was were so fine, fast. they were vicious. playing, I was like, this is great. Yeah. And I took the puppy out front to go to the bathroom, and I didn't have any toys or anything around because I figured they're, you know, that's not a good thing for them to come home to, a new puppy. And somehow, some way, he must have found one of his toys under the couch or something. And my daughter said that he was sitting and by his back leg was his toy. The puppy came running in and went under his leg, but he went crazy. So now I got a puppy in my office in the front. That either stay there, there or, or upstairs. upstairs. It's just not fair to both dogs that they can't get along. Our main goal or priorities here is getting this dog to be able to react with other dogs and obviously not go crazy when people come in the house. I mean, well, just, learn just that, right? yeah, just like, learn to like listen. All the time. He's just so hyped. What was his uh, his history before you guys got him? I got him from the pet store. Okay. The puppy is an Irish doodle. Okay, the doodle. Yes, Irish shadow hair. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The puppy and him were good. Just for a day. For like 48 hours. Right. And right. then the puppy went under right. him, freaked him out, up. and that. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it wasn't even like just a little fight. Bit he the other dog. And he was just whipping him around like a little doll. I thought the puppy was dead. Has he bitten anybody? No. Never. Okay. No. Okay. No. And the grandbabies are always here. They just left. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I mean, it, he'll he'll bark at you, but he will never. He'll try to retrieve them. Like if they're playing, he'll do what he does. Does you know? And he'll pull yeah. you and but just buy your shirt. And then he not... wants to lay on top of you. Yeah. Part of me wants to bring him outside and bring him for a walk, get to know him, to work with him. The only problem with that sometimes happens is, is once him and I are good. I don't have the ability to work with this. So what I want to do is maybe be a little bit more realistic. And what we can do is we can go outside, spend a minute and a half outside, we'll come back in. And I want to see what you guys normally do with them. All right, you guys, so obviously tons of reactivity at the door. He's a big golden and he is really reactive. That would be scary for anybody, no matter who they are and what kind of work they've done with dogs. He's very reactive. But what I don't like is how nervous he is and how insecure and stressed he is. He sat at that back door and barked and jumped and scraped for the whole time we were talking. So what I got right now, guys, is I got my treat pouch filled with uh, beef liver. So it's like my go-to treat. And then I have my four foot, no bad dogs, biothane leash. Um, I'm gonna be using the treats to get to know the dog a little bit with some obedience. I'm probably gonna switch to the prong collar and the leash just because he is so powerful and when she's using that slip he's uh not really paying attention to that and so i want to so we'll see i don't know maybe we'll we'll use water and no leash uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go in and figure it out all right so i also have my no bad dog slip leash too so we'll see I, i'm not married to the to any equipment i'm married to what's going to work for this dog but i got a couple things in my pocket or in my toolbox to make sure that we're going to be successful hi again <laughs> Place. Milo. Milo. Place. Place. Hey, Milo. Okay. I mean, while you were outside, he fell asleep on the floor. Yeah. yeah. It was fine. It was comfortable. All right, so why don't you give him a little break and then see how he does. So you can just break him off, hang on to your leash. I just want to see what he does. So he's definitely nervous and yeah. insecure. Yeah. How much work do you do with him outside? We never go on walk. 
Okay. Because he drags. I mean, I, he, he'll drag me. Like, or I'll just stop. And then I gotta, and I'm, then he won't move. So outside walking isn't something? Not even a thing. Not even a thing. Don't Not even do a it. thing. Okay. Haven't, he's never done it. Do you want to do it? Absolutely. Okay. For a dog that's never bitten anybody before, he really looks like he wants to bite me. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to come around. Good boy. It's okay. Come on. Milo, come here, bub. Uh, have you put the prong on him before? I just put it on to see, like, but I didn't really know how to use it. Let me see how it fits. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I don't, was don't put it on that way. Oh, that's So right. use the clip. Yep. If you can fit it over the dog's head, it's too big. It's too big. Right. You want it to be nice and snug behind his ears. He is so fearful and so afraid. He's never going to just be like, okay, I like you now, or okay, I'm comfortable with you. These, this type of dog, you have to show them that things are going to be okay. And if you, just like kids going to first grade, if you just say, hey, do you want to stay at home with mom and watch cartoons all day, or do you want to go to school? They're always going to want to do what they're comfortable with. And in his case, he's always going to want to say, I don't want to go up to anybody new, which is creating this, this roadblock in his head of insecurity and not being able to progress mentally in, in his confidence building skills. So I'm gonna grab a long line and we're probably gonna go out back and see how we do with that. Come here, Milo. Come here, bubs. Come here. It's okay. Good job. So we're just introducing leash pressure. Good boy. I'm getting closer to him. Come on, bub. Come on. Good boy. Good job, Milo. Sit. <gasps> Good boy. Good job. So tons of positive reinforcement here, guys. Just really letting them know that I'm okay and doing the best I can to work with them. And again, because they've never walked them on the leash and they don't have leash pressure, it's like somebody having a really big problem and not being able to, to speak to them in their language. Like he doesn't understand leash pressure at all, which of course is a dog's language other than body language. So if you guys watch what I'm doing is some inside turns, really working with him in increments here. And again, the reason why the prong collar is clearly and obviously more successful than the slip is because when he puts on the brakes, the prong collar is gonna evenly distribute that pressure to him, making it a safer, more effective tool. Sniffs me, that's good, points for me. Good boy, sits down, good job, good boy. Good, takes a treat from my actual hand. Good job. So the fact that he's not able to go out for a walk as a, as a dog, as a golden retriever, and as a two-year-old animal is obviously crippling to what he needs to do and what his sources need to be for exercise mentally and physically. I mean, this is a beautiful backyard, but he's not getting that physical exercise. If you guys remember Dog's Destiny, uh, the, the little documentary that we did on Golden Retrievers, I'll leave the link up here. They need a significant amount of mental and physical exercise as dogs because they're working dogs. Right now, judging by what I'm seeing in the first half an hour of working with him, he basically goes into fight or flight or mode, obviously chooses fight in the beginning. And then when you confront him, if you will, or you actually give him a little bit of pressure, he then tries to run away, which is normal. And I'd rather have a dog run away from me than try to bite me. Yeah. The lack of structure and the lack of what am I supposed to be doing is why are you getting that external? So you got like a kink in your neck. It may be because of your back because it's all connected. So if you tell him to go to his place and he's like, I know what you want, I'm rushing to the door instead. Mm -hmm. And then you're not able to say, hey, that's inappropriate. You need to do this. That will make things worse for him mainly because he doesn't feel confident. Okay. So it could be a mixture of him not knowing obedience as well as he needs to, not having accountability when you ask him to do something. All of that comes into the external behavior. I feel like I have this fear now. Yes. That's why I get very like- Anxious, looking, sure. Yeah. Then that's the only thing I don't know how to get over. Like I'm just afraid it's either gonna be a person. He never did do anything, but. That's why I'm training you, right? I'm seeing all of that. So a lot of people, when I say to do something, you don't realize like, what, why? What's the meaning of that? When you're walking with him, put your shoulder straight, put your arm down. That's your confidence. That's why I'm saying these things to you. So w throughout this process, you won't realize that when I tell you to do these very small little things, like a golf swing, right? Or a bowl, you know, a bowl stroke. It's like and those little movements, you might be off and I'm like, hey, straighten out your shoulder this way instead of this way and it might make your ball go straight or whatever. All those little tiny things will make you a better handler.
right, you guys, so now's the real test. We just came back after lunch, so we're gonna see how they handle this situation in reality. Hi. How are we doing? Wasn't too bad. Your obedience is looking good inside. That's good. I think the next thing is, is just make get the obedience better and tighter. So I think if we want to get the puppy out, I can go with the puppy over here mm -hmm. into this area. Let let it do whatever it wants to do. Shut the gate, and then you work on a the same thing. Healing. Yeah. As soon as you start getting really good with some of your basics, then you want to start making it a little bit more realistic. So get the puppy out and do that. And then stop and sit. Sit. Good sit. So make sure you tell him good sit good if sit. he does good. Good, and then work on your stay. Stay. Good. Let it go? No. Okay. No, just starting off with the basics first. Got your hands full here, full with this one. And then why don't you just walk towards the gate? Good job, I'm just seeing how this interaction is and by his, his hi buddy, hi. See now when he does that, should I pull him yeah, down? Yeah, just give him a little pressure, Not nothing crazy, mm -hmm. good. The reason why I wanted to do this is A, I wanted to see his behavior, but me hanging out with him it's not a threat. helped him with me. Okay, ah, He okay. just jumped on here and gave me a big smile. <laughs> but you just have to continue to kind of feel, feel these things out with him. Like this is very playful, they want to play right now. Mm -hmm. um, so this is all good. But like I said before, um, I wanted to see what he would do. And obviously with this tail wagging and the immediate licking, it was good. But look at him and I. Mm -hmm. Like he's a lot more confident yeah, with me. Now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. His mouth isn't shut. And just give him a little pressure off. Just off. a little bit off. Good. Anything that you don't want, you got to start correcting. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You can see like where they're yeah, jumping that's up. when I leave. So you say off and you give them pressure. But you got two dogs that are out of control. Meaning like, you know, they're not going to listen to you, but mentally they're just crazy. Like they don't have any clue what to do. You're a sweetheart. You're very sweet. Nice to meet you. I'm going to do a little bit of training with the puppy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a little two and one here. And I want you to work on your, just your place, sit, stay. Okay. And just hang out right there. So I'm going to just start working on engagement first. Good. Monty. Yes because he's just such a crazy mind right now. You gotta reel that in and focus that. Okay, yes, go ahead. Right now, what that dog needs the absolute most is structure. He comes out of that crate and he's just doing everything that he wants to do. Yep. See, when I see a dog like that, it just makes me sad mm -hmm. because they don't know what to do. You wanna be able to take all that craziness, say, hey, I want you to work for me. Take all that energy and that drive into placing and sitting and staying and then breaking and place. How old is he? Six months. If you were to train a puppy from when you get them at eight to 10 weeks, four months of training should be way more than enough to get a dog really sharp. Yep. What a lot of people do, and it's no fault to dog owners because they don't know, is they wait to train or they wait for there to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And that's where I usually get called in. People get a dog like that, they don't train it because there's nothing significantly wrong and we just put it off as like, oh, it's just a puppy. My dog at three months was off leash doing everything that she does now that everyone is like, oh my gosh about. And so there's no excuse to get a dog and not train them mm -hmm. up until that point. That's just something that you really, really wanna focus, focus on. Because I'm telling you right now, that will be a very, very big headache if you don't, because then you'll get things done with him and then wait for him wait to get him. bigger. Yep. Then you're gonna be like really yep. struggling. Yeah, I don't wanna do that. Yeah, I wanna go outside and see how he does. Okay. Because that's really like the next step is to see how he's doing outside. what he's doing right now he's like looking at me mm -hmm. or he was just a second he doesn't do that the way that he's looking at you now for the first yeah, time for the first time is because you're creating a relationship that means something mm -hmm. he's like oh oh maybe you do know what you're <laughs> yeah. doing after Finally, all two years later my friend tucker says hi to the no bad dog army <laughs>
you guys, day number two in New Jersey. We're about to go in and test these guys out as far as the place and sit stay. Uh, and we're also gonna get into some puppy training, some e-collar training. Today's gonna be a fun day. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe. Here we go. We're gonna get into some training. So when you're putting on the leash, you wanna just slide it on, tighten it right up, nice and snug. And then what we can do is work on all of our obedience inside and you can work on your place. Stay with him. Good, yes, good. Good engagement. Up. Yep. Up. Sit. Yes. Good sit. Good sit. Good heel. Come on, Monty. Good heel. Good heel. Good. I, I yeah. see, like I understand like everything yeah. that you're saying. But now what's going through my mind is I think it might be too much with the two of them. Mm -hmm. because I'm not experienced. Mm -hmm. We can all see that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's a lot. So how am I supposed to give him my attention? Like just what we're doing today, all I'm thinking about is, oh God, he's been stuck in that room for like the majority of the day, which he's not like that usually. Obviously I'm not gonna leave him because he's mm -hmm. older and he's, who, who's gonna want a golden that's got a little yeah. Something something going on. If I keep wasting time with the puppy another month, another month, another month, another month. Yeah. Now I have a year old puppy. At that point, if it's so bad where they can't be together, mm -hmm. then how's that puppy really living a life? You know, I just honestly think the puppy would probably be better off if he was with somebody who can actually give him the attention. Yeah. And here I am thinking I got the puppy to help him, but I think it's making it worse. Yeah, I would agree. What a lot of dog owners do is do like what you guys did is like, oh, we have a dog that is this, that, the other thing. Let's get another dog that can, you know, in theory, they're just gonna go back and play all day, come in and sleep. Yeah. There's a difference between socialization and playing and being a dog and all of that being separated from control and obedience and confidence mm -hmm. because it, it all stems from you. Yeah. If you run a tight ship, you can have a hundred dogs mm -hmm. in this I house. I wouldn't matter. Now he's not getting the training yeah. that he needs mm -hmm. and we're just waiting for a big problem to happen yep. with him. That's a puppy that I would be able to really. Well, I could see mm -hmm. like for when he was that age, he was not like that. So you can see you're like, oh shit. Yeah. I didn't even know I had that parked in the garage. I didn't even know, whoa. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, no bad dogs. And that's where really my mission statement kind of comes in is just showing people that if yeah. you know what you're doing and you're and you the core like like you said like if I left and I you know and then you just continued to work that dog kind of half-assed he's gonna yeah not it's not progress. gonna progress it's just gonna be so it'd be a shame to not bring him out and reach his full potential yeah no I would feel terrible yeah I would feel terrible and I and you know, my job is working with people not dogs and some people don't have maybe enough integrity confidence or whatever to come to that realization. Mm -hmm. They cling emotionally to, well, yeah. it's our puppy. Well, yeah, of course. And you're thinking but, like, like I'd rather him be happy, like that's what he's, you know, be happy, be a dog, do dog things, not just be stuck like. Yeah. This is one of the first videos that when we showed up to the, to the house that basically by the end of the training sessions that somebody's gonna get rid of their dog for the better. Before you guys jump, to conclusions, just know that the best decision for the puppy that we deal with in this video, Monty, the cute little puppy, is to get rid of this dog. So just know that she did make the decision to find Monty a new home because of the work that I did with Monty. I basically took this dog out, showed the owner what this dog is capable of, Again, like no bad dogs. Yeah, the puppy's in the other room because puppy doesn't know anything and puppy's out of control. I work the dog for 20 minutes and he's loose leash, off leash, healing around her house, completely engaged and ready to work. It completely blew her mind and she said, I had no idea that this dog is a capable of half the stuff that you just did in the time that you did it in. I am certainly not the right owner for this dog and she's actually gonna pass the dog on to I think one of her relatives that can spend some more time with the dog. So again, like this video just is life changing in so many different ways, hopefully in the community of dogs 
as well as just understanding like for the first time on film, sometimes it happens after, um, or sometimes it happens without us knowing that she's like, I can't do with this dog. This isn't the right home for this dog. And I applaud and respect and hats off to this particular owner for realizing that because that's what a lot of people should be doing is if you get a dog and you get overwhelmed, you don't have to keep the dog. The dog will forget about you in a week and love somebody else and be completely fine as long as they're getting the attention, the affection and the training both mentally and physically that they need. That's the better decision. So I just wanted to give you guys context uh, that the owner, I backed the owner 100% on that decision. It was the best decision for the dog um, because now the dog is gonna you know, live a happier life. La, 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 wait till I get my money right. I had a dream I could buy my way to heaven. When I woke, I spent that on a necklace. I told God I'll be back in a second. Man, it's so hard not to act reckless. Excuse me, was you saying something? Uh-uh, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go over my little spiel. So basically, uh, it has the pager, which is the vibrate, which is what you felt before. And then it has the stimulation. So the stimulation has a variance of levels from zero to 127. Humans typically will feel it on their inside of their wrist around, like I, it depends on the day, but I feel it right now at 16. And it's just a little sensation. It's not, it's not gonna hurt or shock or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh yeah, I kind of feel that. The goal of the remote collar is to teach him that this little tingle is you. So basically think about it like a wireless leash. So with a leash, you can apply pressure. So if a dog's not coming back, you can give them pressure. If a dog isn't getting to a place, you can give them pressure. Um, and there's nothing else in the world that allows you to give a dog pressure and accountability. Because there's, I could, I could yell at a dog all I want that's mm -hmm. off leash, but I can't do anything if they don't listen. Yes. Except just get louder and more upset as they're continuing to laugh at me and run away. We typically condition between two and five. The vibrate is gonna be 10 times, maybe even more, more adversive, more corrective than the low level stimulation. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks like, I don't wanna shock the dog. Well, don't, well then don't, yeah. mm -hmm. keep it low. And, and again, like if you were to put this on and use the stim on a, like I said, like a 16, you're like, oh yeah, I kinda of feel that. And the vibrate is like, yeah. holy smokes. I feel like sometimes animals feed off of your attention. For sure. Yeah. And I'm, wondering maybe if she relaxed more with, with the two he, of them together that's what i'm saying yeah. i don't i say that i it's gonna i don't know if i'm that's why because i said say, say I don't maybe like it's someone. better off if the puppy finds say another I don't home like someone and you're in the situation with me yeah and yet you do like that person and you like me no i know i gotta make, protect you make no i'm saying make it known that you're awkward and making it feel awkward you're gonna make me feel awkward and yeah. the other person so i'm assuming Maybe a little bit of it has to I don't to know do how that would go away though after seeing that. That's the problem. Does it come after time? I don't know, maybe it comes with a little bit of forgiveness. I, I forgave him, but I'm always, if I was sitting here cooking right now and they were playing, I would be like a wreck thinking <laughs> at any given moment it's gonna happen again. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of what we're doing too is just de like over time we're developing confidence just with handling. Milo, come. Good, sit, good. So when I ask him to sit, I'm going, sit. And then when he puts his butt on the ground, it releases. Good boy, good. And this this is it. And so it's kind of like watching paint dry, to be honest. It's really not that exciting. It's it's just something that you have to teach him. This is the, so what, you tag it in. Tap, 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 pay. Tap, 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 pay. So with my dogs, like I can't even slide the remote collar across my counter without them getting really excited. So that's how it should be, always. Sit, yes, good. Okay. Place. Hold it, release. Good. Good stay, buddy. Come on, Bubba. Good boy, good boy. It's okay, buddy. Hi, good boy. Oh, no. Good boy, good job, good job, good job. Good boys, good job, good job. I think he's just a little, it's okay. I think he's a little conflicted. He doesn't really know what to do, I don't think. Good job, shake it off, he's a little stressed. 
Hey, Hello. how are you? Good. Stay. Stay. Nice. This is what I love. I'm glad that you can bring him out and heal him now and bring him for a walk, because mm. that's good for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, a week ago, I would never have stepped foot outside with him. Even if somebody said, everything will be fine, it's gonna be, I still would say, no, I don't trust it. Now I'm like, oh, yeah. not that big of a deal. And, and now you have the confidence. Yeah. That's good. Well, we're getting it, but I'll get there with him. I just love like his state of mind, you know? Like it's it so is. nice. And he's not budging. That's like what I mean. Anytime somebody would make a move, he would bark. Even if it was somebody who's been here a hundred times. Yeah. Yeah, he's just happier, mm -hmm. calmer. So anyway. I think he felt more like almost involved with everybody yesterday than he normally would ever. Because normally when there's that many of us and he's doing that crazy barking, you have my son, Joe, my son-in-law, everybody yelling, shut up! Yeah. Like, like looking at him like, just shut up, shut up, I'm walking away from him, where yesterday, he was being so calm and it was like, they were sitting on the couch and he jumped on the couch and was laying on everybody and I'm yeah. like, like nobody was telling him, knock it off, stop, like, and he just seems like, oh, okay, right. this is good, like, um, they're petting me because they want to play with me, they want, you know, and yeah. normally it's not like that. And he's getting rewarded for that good, calm behavior. Mm -hmm. And the Definitely. more that happens, you'll see way less reactivity, even more than you are now, over time as he continues to, yeah. to, to get like confident and, oh, if I act like this, everything's good. I honestly did not know that in three days, I'd have a completely different dog. Like com I took the dog for a walk around the block. He's never been for a walk around the block. He's sitting, he's staying, he's not, lunging at people when they walk in and it's three days it's oh, i can't explain but tom like just it's like he knows he knows exactly what the dog needs what i need to train the dog anybody i think can like just tell you like okay teach your dog to sit to stay but he taught me how to handle a dog that has it like major issues and he taught me so that i can help him if he didn't teach me the dog would probably have had to either go and I don't think anybody else would have taken him and he, you know, he could have lost his life over something like this. So I'm, I'm like, so that I could cry right now because I'm actually thankful for Tom to do this for me. It was great. I can't, cannot believe that I could take my dog outside and I could have people over and not have to worry that, and I get to keep them. I'm so looking forward for another month that I can see how much he's grown in that month yeah. and everything now, you know, and it was all, because I just needed the tools to help him. And I didn't have that. I absolutely did not have that. So it was great. The incident happened with them two not getting along when I got him two days into getting him. So I got him at 10 weeks. He's now six months. So it's been that long that they have not interacted. They see each other a little bit through a gate, but not, so to see them being able to play, I, I'm, my mind is blown that like, you know, they'll be okay, that they'll be okay.